that migrants who are coming here to our city are well received, that they're supported, that they have food, clothing, shelter, medical care if necessary. My frustration comes from um, the actions of uh, the governor of Texas. There could be a level of coordination and cooperation, but he chooses to do none of those things and instead tries to send human beings, not cargo, not freight, but human beings across the country to an uncertain destination um, and, and what the circumstances here on the ground. We have yet to hear from anybody in an official capacity from Texas. That's unacceptable. We're talking about human beings' lives who have themselves gone through an incredible journey just to get to the United States. I think the decent human thing to do is to co cooperate and collaborate. Um, I understand what, what, that he obviously has no interest whatsoever in providing any kind of support to people that are coming to Texas. But then do the right thing and collaborate and cooperate. Instead of us having to guess, are they coming, are they not coming, how many, what are their needs? That is insanity that doesn't have to happen. He is manufacturing a human crisis, and it makes no sense to me. We're, we're, still trying to, we're still trying to get that information. They literally just have been here um, less than two hours. So we're working with them now to understand what their countries of origin are, whether or not they have uh, any relatives um, or contacts here in the area, um, and if not, uh, what we need to do to make sure that we can um, welcome them properly. We can, we can do, we can do a follow-up. That's okay. Go ahead, sir. Well, it's part of my agenda to be a welcoming city, thousand um, percent. It's part of the agenda of the city of Chicago to make sure that when people come to our city are in need, we welcome them. So, um, yeah, of course, I have been very unequivocal in my time as mayor to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to provide a safe, welcoming space here in the city of Chicago. This is a time for us to live our values, and that's precisely what we're doing. I think you had a follow-up. We have already done. We've already done that. We started that process last week, um, and particularly, obviously, since we see that there's going to be a continuing transition of folks from the border to Chicago. Of course, we're asking for any assistance that we can get from the federal government. The state has stepped in. The county has been uh, an awesome partner. So we're asking all people of goodwill to step up and help support us. And in fact, um, we've stepped, set up a website um, on the city of Chicago's um, formal website. That's cityofchicago.gov forward slash support. Cityofchicago.gov forward slash support. So those who um, want to provide food, clothing, shelter, or just monetary donations to help support the work of the not-for-profits that are on ground, doing um, everything that they can to support uh, these folks, we need your help. So I hope people will respond. How are you, ma'am? Good to see you. Well, I don't think this is what we stand for. I think it's decidedly unpatriotic and un-American. Um, I understand the pressures uh, that the people of Texas and some of the other border states are under. We see that on a daily basis. But the thing to do is not this. This is creating a human crisis and treating people without dignity, without respect. It's not what we are as Americans, and it's frankly another demonstration of unpatriotic um, conduct on the part of the governor of Texas. We can and must do better as Americans. The rest of the world is watching us and how we're treating these people who are coming to our country because they're fleeing violence, they're fleeing a lack of economic opportunity, they're fleeing other kinds of persecution. This is what our country has been about. We open up our arms and we welcome those who have um, struggled to find a decent quality of life elsewhere. And the way that we welcome them is not what the governor of Texas is doing. It is absolutely un-American. And I urge him 
he professes to be a Christian, this is not the Christianity and the teachings that, of the Bible that I know. And I think religious leaders all across the country are standing up and denouncing exactly this. But what we must do in this moment is make sure that we do live our values and we open up every opportunity that we can to support these migrants who have had such an arduous journey getting here to Chicago. Here is a land where we believe in justice for all, and we're always going to welcome them and do everything we can to support them. We have people coming as families, young children, with their first taste of democracy and freedom in many instances, and we need to make sure that the memory that they have of Chicago and the United States is one of, of favorable, where regardless of what their life's journey takes them on, I want them to feel like in this moment that they came to this city and we wrapped our arms around them and loved them and supported them. Heather. Well, this is, as I said, a real um, network of care from the state, the county, and the city. They need what you would expect. They need sh um, shelter. They need um, how, uh, uh, warm food. Um, we're making sure that there are no medical issues uh, with any of the folks there. So we're doing for them what we would do for any vulnerable resident um, here in the city of Chicago, making sure that we understand what their needs are and then amassing the resources uh, to meet that need. And I can't speak enough about the not-for-profit groups that have really stepped up, from the Salvation Army to the Resurrection Project um, to NIJC that's providing uh, legal support as they navigate uh, the immigration system here. There is a long list of people who have stepped up in this moment and shown what Chicago is really about, that we are here to help our neighbors, whether they're long-term residents or people coming new to our city. Well, we really don't know, and that's part of my frustration with the governor of Texas. Um, he's just putting people on, on uh, buses and treating them like freight. That is the frustrating thing. Human beings deserving of dignity and respect. And the best way that we can make sure that we live those values, which I hope that we all aspire to as public servants, is to make sure that there's communications and collaboration. We shouldn't have to guess. We shouldn't have to um, have people on the ground whispering to us about what's happening. If you want, don't want these folks to stay in Texas, then make sure that you collaborate with the cities that, before you put them on the buses so that we can be here um, and make sure that our services are welcoming and supportive of whatever their needs are, but we, it's guesswork until we actually, they actually get here. That's no way that any government should operate. It's not necessary. As I said, it's a manufactured crisis. Jewel Hiller, WGN. Yes, ma'am. I think we got word of that um, late yesterday, um, but again, it's always um, uh, uncertain until we get more specific information. So we got word uh, from uh, various contacts that it might be a possibility. And then throughout the course of the day, we were monitoring to make sure um, that we had the best and most up-to-date information as possible. It really became real, um, I will say, late afternoon. And then they arrived here, as I, as I mentioned, at about 4.15. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget the number or the website, uh, chicago.gov forward slash support for anyone who wants to provide support, um, whether it's food, clothing, shelter. Um, there's a lot of needs that are here. Our not-for-profit partners are stepping up, the governments across the uh, state, county, and city, but we can always use uh, extra support and help. Thank you all very much.